prototype fighter aircraft for the U.S. Air Force Advanced Tactical Fighter Program. The Northrop McDonnell Douglas YF-23 is an American single-seat, twin-engine stealth fighter aircraft technology demonstrator designed for the United States Air Force. Two YF-23 prototypes were built, nicknamed Black Widow II and Grey Ghost. In the 1980s, the USAF began looking for a replacement for its fighter aircraft, especially to counter the USSR's advanced Suhoi Su-27 and McCoyan MiG-29. Northrop teamed with McDonnell Douglas to develop the YF-23, while Lockheed, Boeing, and General Dynamics developed the YF-22. The two YF-23 prototypes are currently museum exhibits. American reconnaissance satellites first spotted the advanced Soviet Su-27 and MiG-29 fighter prototypes in 1978, which caused concern in the U.S. Both Soviet models were expected to reduce the maneuverability advantage of contemporary U.S. fighter aircraft. In October 1985, the USAF issued a request for proposal to several aircraft manufacturers. The NATF program called for the procurement of 546 aircraft along with the USAF's planned procurement of 750 aircraft. Both teams were given 50 months to build and flight test their prototypes, and they were successful, producing the Lockheed YF-22 and the Northrop YF-23. The YF-23 was designed to meet USAF requirements for survivability, supercruise, stealth, and ease of maintenance. The USAF initially required the aircraft to land and stop within 2,000 feet, which meant the use of thrust reversers on their engines. This allowed the aircraft to have smaller engine nacelle housings. The first YF-23, Prototype Air Vehicle 1, was rolled out on the 22nd of June 1990. PAV-1 took its 50-minute maiden flight on the 27th of August with Alfred, Paul, Metz at the controls. The second YF-23 made its first flight on the 26th of October, piloted by Jim Sandberg. The first YF-23 was painted charcoal gray and was nicknamed Black Widow II, after the Northrop P-61 Black Widow of World War II. It briefly had a red hourglass marking resembling the marking on the underside of the Black Widow spider before Northrop management had it removed. A proposed naval variant of the YF-23 known as the NATF-23 was considered as an F-14 Tomcat replacement. The original YF-23 design was first considered but would have had issues with flight deck space handling, storage, landing, and catapult launching reasons requiring a different design. The YF-23 was an unconventional-looking aircraft, with diamond-shaped wings, a profile with substantial area ruling to reduce aerodynamic drag at transonic and supersonic speeds, and an all-moving V-tail. The cockpit was placed high, near the nose of the aircraft for good visibility for the pilot. The aircraft featured a tricycle landing gear configuration with a nose landing gear leg and two main landing gear legs. Of the two aircraft built, the first YF-23 was fitted with Pratt & Whitney yttrium fluoride engines, while the second was powered by General Electric yttrium fluoride engines. The aircraft featured fixed engine nozzles, instead of thrust vectoring nozzles as on the YF-22. As on the B-2, the exhaust from the YF-23's engines flowed through troughs lined with heat ablating tiles to dissipate heat and shield the engines from infrared homing missile detection from below. Test pilot Paul Metz stated that the YF-23 had superior high angle of attack performance compared to legacy aircraft, with trimmed AOA of up to 60 degrees. The proposed production F-23 configuration for full-scale development, or engineering and manufacturing development, would have differed from the YF-23 prototypes in several ways. The aircraft's overall length was slightly increased, volume was expanded, the nose was enlarged to accept mission systems, including the radar, and the forebody chines were less pronounced. The NATF-23, the schematics of which surfaced in the 2010s, was different in many ways, the diamond wing was located as far back as possible, it has conventional twin tails instead of the rudder vader with serrations for low RCS and increased maneuverability at low speeds for aircraft carrier operations, folding wing capability for flight deck storage, reinforced landing gear, tailhook and canards for landing on aircraft carriers and thrust vectoring nozzles. The first YF-23, with Pratt & Whitney engines, supercruised at Mach 1.43 on 18 September 1990, while the second, with General Electric engines, reached Mach 1.6 on 29 November 1990. The aircraft's weapons bay was configured for weapons launch, and used for testing weapons bay acoustics, but no missiles were fired, Lockheed fired AIM-9 Sidewinder and AIM-120 AMRAM missiles successfully from its YF-22 demonstration aircraft. The two YF-23s flew 50 times for a total of 65.2 hours. 
The tests demonstrated Northrop's predicted performance values for the YF-23. The YF-23 was stealthier and faster, but the YF-22 was more agile. It has been speculated in the aviation press that the YF-22 was also seen as more adaptable to the Navy's NATF, but by 1992 the US Navy had abandoned NATF. Following the competition, both YF-23s were transferred to NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center at Edwards AFB, California, without their engines. NASA planned to use one of the aircraft to study techniques for the calibration of predicted loads to measured flight results, but this did not take place. Northrop modified aircraft PAV-2 to serve as a display model for its proposed interim bomber. After a great deal of study and the building of static models, the Mitsubishi X-2 Shinshin testbed aircraft flew as a technology demonstrator from 2016. One such company that responded was Northrop Grumman and there is speculation that it could offer a modernized version of the YF-23 to Japan. Both YF-23 airframes remained in storage until mid-1996, when the aircraft were transferred to museums.